Good morning, friends. It's Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cooks United Methodist Church. Welcome. Uh, welcome to our church patio, a favorite place of mine, uh, and this is uh, a favorite time of day for me. Uh, so welcome those of you who join us on a regular basis. Welcome to those of you who are finding us maybe for the first time. Uh, we uh, hold you in our thoughts and in our prayers. Um, good morning, Janet. Good morning, all of you who uh, join us on a regular basis. And uh, we just want you to know uh, whether you're with us all the time or whether you um, are joining us just once in a while or you've never even met us before uh, that we're holding you in our thoughts and our prayers and we trust that um, you will know how much God loves you uh, and is for you uh, so we spend uh, just a few minutes Monday through Thursday um, live stream here at 8 30 uh, on our Facebook page and then the videos are posted uh, YouTube and Facebook later uh, we do this every Monday through Thursday so that we can get our um, focus in the right direction it's so easy to be busy in this world with tons or with nothing and still be distracted from um, uh, feeling and knowing God's abiding um, presence with us and so that's our only goal uh, here so I want us to look at um, <clears throat> what I would have talked about with you last Thursday had my mind not uh, left me so uh, this is really about the work that all of us are called to do now I don't be I, you might be disappointed I'm not going to give you like a bullet list of the things that God is expecting um, you'll discover your own work some of that will be similar with that of other people and then some of ours will be very different um, from uh, other people's um, but it is still about uh, the reality of our work and how we do our work so we're just going to jump right in today this is a verse from the 25th chapter of Exodus uh, and so this is instruction from God to and through Moses um, for God's people. They have been, um, God has heard their cries. Um, they may think that that's a new thing. We know that that's just who God is. God heard their cries um, in slavery and uh, worked to set them free. Uh, they have been, um, uh, they have found that made their exodus from uh, Egypt and now they are wandering through uh, the wilderness and God is beginning to shape them uh, even more than before as a people and so there are instructions about worship and there are instructions about relationships with one another there are instructions about how to go about daily living and God is not just setting the rules so that God uh, gets to say whether you're a good person or not it, this is about shaping um, a people who will be different from any other people because of the spirit within them so this verse comes from the instructions uh, that God is giving Moses to give to the Israelites about uh, tabernacle and about worship tabernacle uh, means dwelling dwelling with this is a place this is where we got this notion that the church is God's house because ta to tabernacle with God is to be is to live with God um, especially for those moments that we um, let everything else fall aside and we worship so let's just jump in this is Exodus 25 verse 9 and I'm reading from the common English translation you should follow the blueprints that I will show you for the dwelling the tabernacle and for all its equipment so I want to I, I promise we're going there but I want you to think a minute if you have been a church goer if you have a relationship with a house of worship I want you to kind of imagine in your mind's eye being in that place especially if you're not back uh, in person for worship um, imagine what it is about that room or about that building that is familiar and lovely uh, to you 
What do you miss about that place? I, I can tell you my home church, the choir loft was a little off center, but because of where my family most often sat, when the choir sang, it was almost as if they were singing over us. And so we were immersed in the music. I love that about that old sanctuary. I'm also very mindful about the sanctuary of my grandmother's church. Um, uh, grandmother and grandfather, matter of fact, both sides of my family. Um, and though they had no stained glass windows in that little bitty church, I can remember the warmth um, of the sun coming through the window right at the end of the pew where my grandparents most often sat and feeling the warmth of that sun um, almost but not quite as intense as the warmth of the fellowship of these people that I didn't worship with week to week but it was still like being at home as I got to know them growing up as a child. I, I want you to think about that, that place and the space and what it is about its familiarity that is beautiful to you. Because God is doing something in the Israelites as he tells them about these blueprints and that there is a particular way um, that he, God wants things done. He wants them to build and then to use in a particular way. Now we're going to do less study about the words in this verse and I want you to hear uh, these lessons about any of the work that God places in front of you. I, and it doesn't matter to me, I don't think it matters if we're talking about the work of parenting the work of being um, an adult child of an aging parent, um, what you do in your office or in your business, what, what vocationally, how you busy yourself, um, if it's about raising children, if it's about raising others' children, uh, I, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, uh, repeal, building, repairing friendships, growing, even though you don't have the same time together as friends as we did when we were 10 and 12 and 16. I think there are four things we have to be willing to look at uh, that this verse teaches us about the work that is ours as children of God, as people of God. And what we're saying here in Cook's uh, UMC these uh, weeks leading up to um, Pentecost is what, what's the work of Easter people, those who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what it means for us. And so here's the first. Um, it is that we, you and I, if we are going to be Jesus followers, must be willing uh, to do the work even if we don't understand the depth of the meaning of the end product. What I mean is um, G, uh, God is telling them about the length and the height and what materials to use for the curtains and how to create the poles uh, that the curtains are going to hang from and inside how to divide um, the tabernacle into certain spaces and how those spaces will be used. And this was not a part of worship that they had experienced in any other part of their life. And so they may not have been able, I would go out on a limb and say they probably did not understand, though they could envision what this will look like, they could not imagine what worship would be like in that place. And now when you think about that sanctuary that you have become so familiar with, whether it's indoors or whether it's outdoors like this patio, there is a sense of being at home there. They couldn't have understood that as they're learning how to measure the fabric or to weave it in a particular way or how to hang those curtains. But the willingness to do the work even before you have all the answers is crucial in our relationship with God. It's a matter of trust. Are you willing 
Um, or are you waiting for God to explain everything to you before you'll jump in in a partnership with God? Now we'll get to the partnership in just a moment. The second thing I would say is that then our work, if we are willing to do it, then our work uh, as a parent, as a spouse um, or partner, as a, um, as a business owner, as an employee, uh, as a teacher, as a disciple, every bit of our work then becomes a gift of faith in and submission to this one who is showing us the blueprints of life. And it's the little stuff as much as it is the big stuff. Um, uh, the, uh, if you'll read through, and for some people it's a grueling thing in Exodus to read through and then uh, in Deuteronomy as well. It's, a, it's grueling to read through the length and the what mix of materials and why you must use this and don't use that. Uh, it's so laborious. However, our work in doing that is a willingness to trust in God. And so that becomes, even in the smallest things, like the attention to detail, becomes an act of submission to God. And because we are submitting to God and allowing God to work within us, it becomes a partnership. I promise we're going to get to the partnership in a minute. Uh, and so this kind of work, submitting ourselves to God, um, to parent uh, differently than maybe the world would teach you to parent. Um, uh, honoring your marriage, honoring your relationships with friends in ways that the world doesn't understand, fighting for love, um, in the uh, uh, agape love in every relationship, whatever the work is, the simple tasks, the big tasks, uh, the work of our hands and feet, but the spiritual work underneath that as well, all of that is a requires trust that God will show you how and show you what in the perfect time. Well now timing is one of those things I think that uh, really uh, messes with us. God's timing is not like our own and just about the time we begin to believe that maybe God has forgotten us then that's when there's a big move or uh, when we've sweat enough, um, then somehow we're able to see God working. It feels as, as if God is, um, we explain it away by saying, well, God's timing is not exactly like ours. But this being willing to trust that you'll know when you need to know really is about faith in God because God's timing is perfect. Uh, sometimes God shows us uh, what the work is and how to do it before the work begins. But most often, we are, we, that's revealed to us as we are working. Uh, I, for to not be a parent, I don't know why this keeps coming to my mind, but often, you, I mean, I, it doesn't matter how hard you try to be prepared for the meltdown in the grocery store with one of your children. Nothing prepares you for that. You, you, the work is done in the moment. Uh, the work is done in the moment when your something tragic uh, happens in your spouse's circle of family or friends, and all of a sudden you can't fix that or amend that for your partner. You, you, you do the work as you go and how you have the opportunity and how God leads you to do that is in the unfolding of it. At the same time, the work must be done. This hints, y'all, at I think, at this um, relationship uh, with God that, that we've got to attend to because the work is an invitation. It's not an obligatory act. God is inviting you to be a partner with God. Now that tabernacle, the dwelling, 
was um, for a place of worship. I, I'm just going to play devil's advocate for a moment because uh, showing the people how to build a spot where they can worship you seems a little self-serving if God were less than God is. To worship means that you feel and or express adoration, uh, veneration, reverence for this entity that is greater than you could ever have imagined and you offer yourself with song, with prayers, uh, with fellowship, uh, with celebration at table, all the things that make up our worship experiences today. But when we come into that space, whether it's a church patio, um, it's a church platform, a sanctuary, wherever you may be, that um, offering yourself to God, uh, acknowledging the partnership that you are accepting with God really does have this many layers in it. It is about obedience, hearing and responding, offering yourself to God, which is an act of worship, but not just for God and not just for you, but also for the community itself. So when God is giving these instructions to Moses to give to the Israelites, God knows already. They don't haven't experienced it, but it really is about this working together. It takes a village. It takes the whole body to be the body of Christ, to be the people of God. And so obedience and worship working together in the heart and lives of every individual that takes seriously the partnership that God offers them to join into uh, has deep, deep meaning. Have you ever thought about what it's like for God to receive the song you sing when you worship? Too often we let the choir do it for us or the band do it for us or that person that's got a better voice. But God wants to hear you sing his name. Uh, have you ever thought about um, what, what it's like for God to know that God has communicated clearly in a way that you can understand and you pick up on that truth very quickly and you respond in obedience to do what it is that God says, okay, now's the time to make that phone call, to offer a word of encouragement, uh, to correct your children to correct a friend that you love uh, to just be with some who is, is someone who is grieving uh, have you ever thought not just about what that person must receive but what God receives when you are obedient and you become partners together in a moment where peace and healing or hope or transformation begin or where they culminate that's what it means to live in this partnership with God and often again we don't know the work until we've already committed to it and we begin to move our hands and our feet and our mouths and our hearts and then the plan the blueprints are revealed and it not only makes a difference in God or in that other person but it makes a difference in this community, in the body, um, the fellowship of believers that you participate in, but it makes a difference in this world. There is something about uh, unity and harmony in the kingdom of God that sets us apart from other people groups, from other uh, ideologies, from other experiences in this world and this world needs what obedience and worship do that they bring those two together through our partnership with God bring hope and healing celebration and victory in ways that nothing else will only the blood of Jesus
So I want you to think today about the blueprints that are clear in your life and the blueprints that you're still looking for. Or you're looking at them and trying to figure them out. You're somewhere in that process of work. Have you committed yourself wholeheartedly? Do you trust in God's provision and in God's timing? Do you trust in your ability to offer whatever you have and that that is received with gladness as enough? from God. I want you to think about the blueprints of your life, um, your work, and be glad to receive that uh, today. Let's pray for God to give us some clarity in that, but also some confidence as we give ourselves to Him. Lord God, we are so grateful for this um, moment, for the warmth of sunshine in the sky uh, falling onto us but also the warmth of not being alone, being present with your spirit, but being present with each other too. Sometimes, no, most times, it's so much more hopeful uh, and more gladdening for us to work together. And we thank you, not only that you have trusted us with this work that points toward you, whatever it is, uh, marriages, uh, raising children, uh, teaching, running a business, uh, protecting our communities, uh, using our gifts and abilities in all of the ways that you would call us to do that. We thank you, Lord, that this is a partnership with you. You're not just standing back and watching what we will do with the gifts and abilities and experiences of life. You long to be our partner. Oh, so that we know a measure of power that is never um, what we could do on our own. We know a measure of, of success, not as the world defines it, but a measure of uh, success and satisfaction that comes only in living out your glory for all to see. Show us very clearly today. Give us a glimpse, would you, of the work that you have set before us. And if it's time, Help us to see the blueprint clearly of what we should be doing and what it will look like. Help us to prepare every space we come into, uh, whether with our hands or feet or just with our minds. May it be a space where worship happens because we leave room for you to be the very middle center of all that we do. We're bold enough by faith, Lord, to thank you for how you will show us, reveal yourself to us today, speak to us about this work that, that has our name on it, that we might be in full partnership with you to bring healing and hope, love and grace to this world. We thank you, God, for all that you do for us and for the privilege of being invited to join you in that work for this goal that your kingdom would be known, that your kingdom would grow, and that we would be a part of making your son Jesus as savior of the world, known to those who do not know his saving grace. We love you, Lord. We're grateful for all that you've given us, and we pray, Lord, that the way we use these next moments and hours uh, would bring glory and honor to you. Thank you for the privilege of work. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, it's been good to be with you. I hope you have a tremendously wonderful day. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.